Are you looking for ways to fix Zoom connection issues, like your Zoom meeting freezing and all of a sudden people are standing still? Or maybe you get a message that your internet connection is unstable during Zoom. Sometimes connection issues show up with Zoom becoming slow or there being a lag between when you see people talking and when you hear the words. Zoom auto quality can suffer with connection issues. Sometimes you even get dropped out of Zoom meetings. All of these things can be really frustrating as a participant and even more challenging as a host of a Zoom meeting. I'm Marcia Chadley from the Creative Life Center, and I enjoy demystifying technology for you so that you can have fun connecting online. Today, we're going to talk about how you can improve the quality of your Zoom connections using simple ideas and understandable language. You don't need to have any tech wizardry at all to learn and do these things. We're going to start by looking at what you can do before you start a Zoom call. And then we're going to explore what happens if you're inside a Zoom meeting, what are things you can try then. There are two main things to think about in terms of Zoom connection. Your device, your computer, your tablet, your phone, and your internet connection. Both of these things need to have the power and the capacity to host or participate in a Zoom call. So we're going to talk about things you can do to improve that power, that capacity, or you might hear some people use the word bandwidth. Let's start by thinking about your device. You want Zoom to have whatever it needs to run itself on your device. The best thing you can do to give it the most power available is to close down everything else that you're not going to use during your Zoom call. If you have apps or applications open that you're not going to need, close those down. If you have browser windows, tabs that are open, close those down. Especially if your computer has a constant sync to Dropbox or Zoom or some other cloud, then you want to pause that so that that's not syncing up while you're talking and being on Zoom. There are processes that run in the background of your computer that sometimes get started and then don't close down until you restart. So if you know you're having issues with Zoom, one thing that you can do before you get onto a Zoom meeting or start hosting one is to restart your computer and close all those things down also. I want to show you a way that if you want to, you can look and see what is using the capacity and the power on your computer. In a Windows machine, you open up the task manager like you're seeing here. On a Mac, you'll open up the activity monitor. You can look and see how much CPU, memory, and disk. You don't need to know what all these mean, but basically if you're getting near 100% on any of these, you're going to have trouble with your Zoom connection. You can tell that Google Chrome here is using most of my memory, which lets me know that what we've talked about before and closing down browser windows will help me have more space, more power, more capacity for my computer to handle a Zoom call. You can actually use this dialog to end tasks, or you can just go simply back to those tasks in their, your computer and close them down. This is a way for you to check and see how much room, how much power, how much capacity your computer has at the moment. Let's look at some simple things that you can do to improve the power and the capacity available to Zoom from your internet connection. Just like with your device, the first question we're going to ask is what else is using up part of that power and part of that capacity? If you can have everybody else or as many people as possible in the house stop using internet while you're on the Zoom call, that will give your Zoom call more power, more ability to do what it needs to do. At least, if possible, ask them not to be doing extraneous things like, like watching videos and YouTube that take a lot of internet power. You can also be using power when you don't think you are from your Wi-Fi. If your phone is connected to Wi-Fi, even if you're not using it, that's taking up some of the capacity from your internet. So you can just turn that Wi-Fi off while you're on your Zoom call. You can also get stronger Wi-Fi connection in different places in your house. Um, that internet, that Wi-Fi is coming out of your modem. And some places in your house will have a better connection to that modem 
over inter over Wi-Fi, um, depending where you're at. You can take a take and carry your tablet or your computer, your phone to different places, and look at the bars that show the internet strength on that device. If you're using your computer, you can actually get stronger internet connection if you hardwire your computer to the modem. So that uses a, a cable like this. I'll, I'll talk about these um, and where you can get them in the video description. I have this special little end that plugs right into your modem, same kind of end that plugs into your computer. Here is one free way to test your internet speed. As you can see, you're gonna have some ads, but you can ignore those. Go to speedtest.net and click go. Now what we're looking at with your internet speed is we wanna see how fast the download speed is and how fast the upload speed is. Simply put, the download speed is how long, how fast, how quickly that images and videos are gonna be received on your computer, how quickly you'll be able to receive the information that Zoom is sending you. Upload speed is the speed that you can send information from your computer up through the Wi-Fi into the internet. So if you're sharing your Zoom screen, for example, the upload speed is, is um, affected. So let me close this and let's see what we have. So right now on my machine, I have almost 120 megabits for download and almost six for upload. What you want with your download speed is, is to at least have 25 for Zoom. And for upload, you wanna at least have three. Now, if your speeds aren't as fast as you need them, one thing to do is to make sure that they fit with what you are paying for. So check with your internet provider information, what kind of download and upload speeds are you supposed to be getting? If you're not getting what you're supposed to be, one of the things that you can try doing if you know how to do this is to restart your modem, your internet modem. You can also get a hold of your provider and talk to them about this, but this will give you the information about how fast you're able to download things from the internet and how fast you're able to upload them. Let's look at some of the things that you can try when you're inside a Zoom meeting and you start to have connection issues. The first thing I suggest, especially if you're a participant, is to simply leave the Zoom meeting and come back in. Sometimes the new connection is better. Think of it just like a phone call. If you have a bad connection and you call back to see if now you can hear and things are working better. If that doesn't work or if that's not something that you can try, Here's some things that you can look at so that Zoom needs less power to do what it's doing. We're gonna start by thinking about video. I'm gonna open up the menu associated with the video. If I'm not using my integrated webcam, if I'm using a webcam or software like I am now, if I choose to switch to the webcam, it takes less power and that might help your connection. And also look at video settings. Right now I'm using high definition video. That takes more power for Zoom. So I could turn that off. Now another thing that you can do is to actually turn off your video. That would be right here. That takes less power for Zoom. But the thing to remember is if you are, especially if you're hosting or if you're talking and interacting in the call, people may be relying on seeing your expression, your emotions, and also seeing your mouth move so that they can do some lip reading to really fully understand what you're saying. So you lose that ability to connect with people if you turn your video off. There are a couple areas, the other areas that you can look at um, and change so that Zoom doesn't need quite as much power and maybe make take care of those connection issues for you. One of those is your screen share. Screen sharing, if you are sharing your screen, takes more power from Zoom, especially sharing videos. If you're having connection issues, I recommend you stop sharing any videos you're sharing, if, and if possible, stop the other sharing you're having and seeing if that helps with the connection issues. Recording of Zoom takes a little bit of bandwidth of power too. So you could try pausing or stopping your recording. 
Also, if you have the option of recording to the Zoom Cloud instead of to your local machine, which you do if you have a paid Zoom account, you could try doing that and see if that helps with your connection issues. The general idea to fix connection issues with Zoom is to increase the power and capacity that the Zoom meeting application can use on both your device and the internet. Which of the tips in this video have been helpful to you? And I'd also really like to hear the other things that you do to help with your Zoom connection.